this is just a brief outline of what we're going to cover this morning. Uh, the way this is structured is I'm going to tell you about a feature and then I'll demonstrate it for you. And we should be able to get through this in about uh, the next 40 minutes. So for those of you not familiar with it, Advanced Steel is a purpose-built construction program for structural engineers and steel detailers. It's built on top of AutoCAD. Um, in Advanced Steel, you can actually create and store a 3D master model of the structure of the building as a DWG file, and then Advanced Steel can be used to automatically create all of the steel details, fabrication drawings, construction drawings, bills of materials, NC code for manufacturing the steel components, uh, and so on. Uh, while you can do all of the work inside Advanced Steel, the real synergy comes about when you uh, use Advanced Steel in conjunction with Revit. Uh, some of the key features of Advanced Steel, uh, first of all, it's got a bi-directional link with Revit, so you're never having to reproduce information uh, in both programs. You can create the data in one program and seamlessly transmit it to the other. Uh, both utilize intelligent structural objects, parametric connections. Um, uh, Van Steel enables the automatic creation of drawings. So while Van Steel is going to generate a lot of the fabrication drawings for you, you're not actually doing any drawing. All of the steps are done automatically. Also, automatic creation of bills and materials and complete uh, document, uh, document management and revision control. So if you look at a traditional workflow, uh, for years, and I'm a licensed architect, uh, so one of the things that I used to be responsible for doing was checking the steel shop drawings when they would come in from the fabricator. Uh, in a traditional workflow, we're working in these individual silos uh, where one person's creating the data, someone else is then developing the fabrication drawings, then somebody else is checking them. It's a lot of duplication of effort. Uh, which introduces all sorts of opportunities for errors to creep in. It's a lot of manual rework, and I would literally spend days going through fabrication drawings and checking them against the actual structural design. With Advanced Steel and Revit uh, working together, you're, you eliminate all of this. So you work with a single unified model, so that eliminates the ability for errors to creep in and reduces a lot of the duplication of effort. If designs are changed, regardless of which program the change is introduced, uh, you can quickly incorporate those changes into the model. And the total project coordination and productivity uh, shows remarkable improvement. So the first thing that you have to do in order to make this all work is download and install the Advanced Steel extension for Revit. And you must download the version that matches your version of Revit. Autodesk keeps changing uh, the way this works. You used to be able to do it entirely from within the Autodesk desktop app. Now you really do need to go to the Manage website. So you would go to manage.autodesk.com, log into your account, select all products and services, locate your Revit subscription, and then click on Updates and Add-ons to locate the Advanced Steel extension, download the app, and then once it's downloaded, install the app, and then once it's been installed, you will see it on the add-ins ribbon in Revit. So if you haven't already done so, the first thing you want to do is open up any web browser, and as I said, go to manage.autodesk.com, log into your Autodesk account, go over to All Products and Services, Locate your Revit subscription. And then once you find your Revit subscription, on the bottom you'll see updates and add-ons, which will bring up this panel, and then just find the advanced steel extension for your version of Revit. So I'm still working with Revit 2020. I really haven't done, uh, I haven't updated to 2021 yet. So the demonstrations today will be using Advanced Steel 2020 and Revit 2020. So once I've downloaded the Advanced Steel extension for Revit and installed it, when I'm working in Revit, I will see on the add-ins panel the Advanced Steel extension. And so I can be working on my structural model inside of Revit 
and very quickly export that structural model. Now, when you export it, it's going to export as an X as an SMLX file. So that's a uh, essentially a steel markup language file. It's an XML file. And the cool thing is the Revit model that I'll be working with this morning is a seven megabyte model because it contains the entire Revit model. The SMLX file from that model is only eight kilobytes. So that eight kil single eight kilobyte file incorporates the entire structural model from Revit. So here's the simple structural model from Revit. On the add-ins panel, you can now see I've got my advanced steel extension. The first thing I want to do is check my settings because I want to make sure that I do export my grids and I want to ignore the beam cutbacks on extensions on export because advanced steel will create those cutbacks automatically for me. So all I need to do to send this model to advanced steel is to begin my export. I do want to do the advanced export so it does export as an SMLX file and simply save that file. Once I've saved that file, I can then send it to whoever is going to be doing my structural design and they will import it into advanced steel using the import function, which is standard in advanced steel. They'll import that SMLX file and they'll have an exact copy of the steel frame from Revit now visible inside of advanced steel. So this is advanced steel. And as I said, it is based on AutoCAD. So all of the regular AutoCAD functions will be there as well. But when I go to an import, here is that eight, actually five kilobyte SMLX file. And that quickly there is the steel frame that I exported from Revit. And now it's available inside of Advanced Steel. Now Advanced Steel, uh, was developed by a company out of Hungary, and Autodesk acquired the program about eight years ago. Uh, it's got some very interesting tools. You'll see some panels, some toolbars in Advanced Steel that you won't find in any other Autodesk product. The main panel that you'll work in is the Connections panel. And in the Connections panel, uh, you have all the Advanced Steel parametric connections. This panel is a very interesting panel because when you select one of the categories along the left, you then get connections within that category. You see a picture of the connection, and then within the picture, you also then see the descriptions and the order in which things need to be selected when you're working in advanced steel to create the connection. So again, we'll open up the connection vault. And as I said, down the left side, and I'll pin this open so that it doesn't just collapse on me. This panel can be resized. You can pan and zoom within this preview window, so it is an active window. And as you select a category on the left, the available connections within that category appear in the center. When you can select one, any of the ones you use on a regular basis, make it a favorite. When you hover your cursor over that particular connection, you then see the order in which you need to select connections. So let's go ahead and add a connection to connect the beams together. So I select my primary beam, press enter, select the secondary beam that frames into it, press enter, and then up comes my advanced steel connection dialog, and this is a non-modal dialog, meaning I can pan and zoom within the drawing while I'm working in the dialog. And you'll also see as I change this clip from a three and a half inch to a five inch angle, you can see that that immediately updated. So as I'm making changes within the connection uh, dialog, those changes are reflected immediately inside of the model. If I do make modifications to this connection, I can save those modifications so that now whenever I frame a W16 by 30 to a W14 by 30, it will use this specific 
angled bolted connection. If I do close that dialog, I can get back to it at any time by simply double clicking on that connection box. So once I've created these connections, I can get back into them at any time by double clicking on this gray cube that appears around the connection, which is the connection box. So the connection box, you think of it as being a container that contains all of the components that are part of the connection. And so I can double click on that connection box to get back into this connection dialog and make changes to that connection. So again, double click on the connection box, up comes the same dialog. And if I've decided, you know, that really should be a three and a half inch angle, not a three and a half by five inch angle. As soon as I make that change, you saw the angle, the clip angle update in the model. So it's very easy to get in and out of the various components inside of Advanced Steel. Now, Advanced Steel has a lot of really interesting features. It is based on AutoCAD. So that means that it does have all of the AutoCAD commands. There is a toolbar in Advanced Steel that works much like that Advanced Steel Connection Vault. So it looks different than other tools that you work with in standard AutoCAD. Some of the commands in here are standard AutoCAD commands. Other commands are special advanced steel functions that really improve the workflow when working with advanced steel. So for example, let's open up the advanced steel toolbar. So I'll open up my connection vault and I'll add a base plate to the bottom of my columns. So I'll add a base plate to the bottom of one column, and I'm just going to create the base plate. I'm not going to create any of the concrete, because that would be created by my structural engineer. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a middle stiffener on both sides. So you saw as soon as I selected it, the stiffener was added to that connection. So I've added my middle stiffener. Now, if I use standard AutoCAD commands, so I'm going to open up my advanced steel tool palette. I'll collapse my vault. I'll pin the advanced steel palette open. And you'll notice that, again, it's arranged the same way. You select a category on the left, and then you get the tools appear here. So this is the standard AutoCAD copy command. So I can use standard AutoCAD commands like copy and array. You will find that there are some additional O-snaps. So there is a grid O-snap in advanced steel. So I'm simply using AutoCAD's copy command to copy that connection, that base plate that I added to the column, to that first column, to all of the other columns along that grid line. Now there is one problem though using the AutoCAD command to do that, as you'll see in a moment. I'm gonna use an advanced steel function to copy that base plate. And I'm going to copy that base plate to the base of all of the columns along this other grid line. So notice that rather than having to select the intersection, I'm simply selecting the columns. And Advanced Steel added that same base plate to the bottom of all of those columns. Now let's go back and modify that, that particular connection. Let's say I have decided I don't want to include a stiffener on both sides. So I'll eliminate the stiffener, and you saw as soon as I eliminated in the dialog, the stiffener is eliminated from the base plate at that connection. The base plates that I copied using the standard AutoCAD copy command still have the base plate because those, or still have the stiffeners rather, because those were simply copies. But the one that I copied using the advanced steel copy tool, the stiffener has also been eliminated from them because they're now part of a connection group. Of course, there is an advanced steel tool that will allow me to add these other connections to the group. So I'm going to select the connections that I want to add to the group, and then select the group I want to add them to. And what's now happened is if we go back and look at this other base plate, since I had eliminated the stiffeners 
from this base plate, it's of course now eliminated from the one that I added to the group, but not from the ones that were simply copied using the AutoCAD copy command. So using the advanced steel tools is definitely the way to work when you're working with advanced steel connections. Of course, advanced steel offers a lot of other tools. So there are tools in advanced steel for add, creating gable frames, for creating trusses, for creating joists, purlins, stairs, adding handrails to stairs, even creating cage ladders and plates and grates. So anything that you would possibly need to add to the steel model, things that are going to be need, needed to be fabricated, but they may not necessarily be detailed out in Revit. Those are components that you would add when working in advanced steel. So just to illustrate some of these tools, let's go ahead and add a straight run of stairs, a steel frame stair to my advanced steel model. And so I'll simply follow the, the uh, prompts. I'm going to align this on the, in the middle, which is the default, and then it brings up the same type of dialog. And I can now make modifications to the steel stair, adjusting the stringer, making changes to the step. Maybe I need to change the width of the stair. Where, where the stair steps. So I've got complete control over the creation of the steel framed stair within advanced steel. If I need to add a handrail to that stair, I'll use the handrailing tool. It asks me to select where the handrail is being placed. And then the starting and ending point of the handrail. And then again, brings up a dialog box with similar features. And now I've got complete control over the creation of the handrail, including which co what components are going to be used, the size of the pipe, uh, how the handrail is being attached to the stringers on the stair, how the railing is terminated. So let's go ahead and add an end return. We'll create a loop, and I want the same at both ends. And as you see, as I'm making the changes in the dialog, the stair is updating automatically. And when you do this in advanced steel, it is creating every steel component. So in this case, that handrail is bolted. So it's created the holes in the steel channel stringer. It's added the bolts and the nuts and the washers. Every component is being added to the steel model. Same thing if I want to create a ladder, I simply select the starting point, the ending point, I'll tile in a height of 30 feet. And advanced steel again brings up a dialog. I can choose how the ladder is going to be fabricated. Is the ladder going to have a cage? If so, what type of cage? So let's go ahead and add a cage. And again, as I make changes in the dialog, I immediately see the change within the advanced steel model. So the feedback is very dynamic. So I only use advanced steel when I am adding additional components. Typically, I'm going to do all of my uh, main fabrication drawings inside of Revit, or my structural engineer is going to do that. Now, of course, because it's based on AutoCAD, there are things you can do to customize advanced steel. Obviously, you want to create custom templates so that the advanced steel drawing, the drawings that advanced steel is creating match your company standards. Uh, you can customize the advanced steel palettes. Uh, the, it's really interesting, the uh, customization of the palettes is much easier than customizing toolbars and uh, and tool palettes in AutoCAD. Uh, it kind of works on a metaphor. If you've ever customized your uh, screen layout on an iPhone, you'll find it very very similar. Um, here's an example. So I'll open up my advanced steel tool palette and I'll pin it open. 
If I press and hold, so I've, I've got uh, settings so I can change the appearance, or uh, in this case, the theme. But if I press the right mouse button and hold it down, you'll notice that the icons start to wiggle, and then I can easily go in and add a command, a new command or a separator, or rearrange things or eliminate tools from my palette or create custom palettes. Uh, while the tool palette is in this wiggly format. And then as soon as I make any change to the palette, it immediately reverts back to its, uh, its standard. So when it stops wiggling, I'm, I'm done with my customization mode. So that's essentially um, how Advanced Steel works. I don't do much of any work in Advanced Steel. So again, I do most of my work inside of Revit, or in this case, let's assume the structural engineer is doing most of the work in Revit. And so only the fabrication drawings are going to be created in advanced steel. There are a number of steps for generating these fabrication drawings. The first thing you want to do is validate the structural model. There is a tool inside of advanced steel that simply checks the model to make sure it is a valid structural model. So this is what that looks like. You simply run the model check. It's a one click and that quickly advanced steel analyzed. Now granted it is a simple model, but if there were errors, there would be tools in here to help me locate and fix the errors. So I have completed my model check. So I have a valid model. The next step to using Advanced Steel before I can create my fabrication drawings, every component in the Advanced Steel model must be numbered. So again, it's a very simple process, which is more or less just a series of clicks. So I'll open up my numbering tool. And it opens up a dialog box, and now I can customize the numbering methodology that I use to number my steel components. But that quickly, Advanced Steel went through and numbered every advanced, every component in the structural model. Now I'm ready to create my fabrication drawings. This is one of the areas where you will want to go in and customize Advanced Steel. I'm going to demonstrate just the tools that are in advanced steel straight out of the box for generating my fabrication drawings. In this case, I'm going to generate all of my drawings as assemblies with all individual parts and place them on the standard ANSI D size sheet. But you can go in and you can create your own custom template so that when advanced steel generates its fabrication drawings, it generates them on your style drawings. You can also use the camera tool because essentially what's happening is advanced steel is going to be creating views based on a camera location so you can manually create these views but it is much much easier to use the tools that generate all the fabrication drawings in a single pass so the way you do this is you create or use one of the standard drawing processes so Again, one of the standard toolbars, I can have it generate based on all the manual cameras that I've manually placed. I can generate drawings based on single parts, assemblies, or selected assemblies. So in this case, I'm going to do all assemblies, place them on standard ANSI D size sheets. I can select how I want the sheets numbered, and then when I click and select OK, Advanced Steel is going through and it is creating the fabrication drawings automatically. And as you see the various components in the steel model disappear, that means Advanced Steel is generating that fabrication drawing. So each of the components will slowly disappear from the model. When the entire model comes back and I'm back to the command line, that's the indication that Advanced Steel is done and has generated about 30 different drawings. Now about 20 drawings that quickly. Now 16 drawings. Although we're seeing 16, there's actually, if you notice, there's a number that are being indicated as update required. 
but in real time, that was advanced steel generating all of my assembly drawings. And I can double click on any of them and open them up inside of AutoCAD as a drawing. Now I can go in and I can make minor modifications. For example, I can move these drawings to relocate them on the page because you notice this one particular drawing was overlapping my revision table in the upper right. But you don't want to make any other modifications to the drawings because these drawings are being managed by advanced steel. So again, I, I noted that there are several drawings that an update is required. Now, why is an update required? Well, in the order that Advanced Steel processed them, it processed some drawings later than others, and as a result, not everything got numbered properly. So I did, even though I hadn't made any changes, I did need to force an update so that Advanced Steel could go through and simply re-number re any of the drawings. So I needed to do that a couple of times to make sure that all of my drawings were up to date. So, well, that's fine. I've generated my fabrication drawings, but we all know that change happens in construction projects throughout the entire time that the project is being designed and even once the project is under construction. When the engineer makes changes to the model, in advanced steel or in Revit, we need to make sure that the advanced steel model, the model on which those fabrication drawings are being created, is always up to date. So what I can do is if the structural engineer has made modifications to the model in Revit, he can export the latest version of the XML, of the SMLX file, that XML file, and then the fabricator can import that into advanced steel and check it against the fabrication model that he's already created. So here we are inside of Revit and we will assume that changes have been made to the Revit model. And so I'm simply going to, again, double check my settings, make sure that it is set up correctly and then export the SMLX file again. In this case, I'm gonna call it version two and now send it to my fabricator. Back in Advanced Steel, my fabricator, instead of importing, is going to synchronize. So this opens up a synchronization dialog, and now in the synchronization dialog, I will load that version two of the SMLX file. And now Advanced Steel is showing me everything that has changed. Anything that's been appended is in green, modified in blue, deleted in red. And I'm going to filter this have, to see, has anything been appended or deleted? Okay, so the structural engineer has not added anything or deleted anything. Obviously, he's modified something. And what's happened is he's modified a number of beams. Well, I need to see what that change is. So I can add some columns. So I can see that there are some W14 by 30s that have come in from the uh, structural model, but they vary. They had originally been W14 by 22s, so a heavier section. So I'm going to select them all and apply all actions. In other words, update the advanced steel model to match the changes that were made in the Revit model. And so once all actions have been applied, the list of elements that has changed is blank, and now my advanced steel model matches the Revit model. Well, that's all well and good, but remember we generated fabrication drawings. So that means that now my fabrication drawings are no longer up to date with the latest version of the Revit model. So I need to update the fabrication drawings. But again, I don't want to do any manual drawing, so I will use the tools in advanced steel to automatically generate the revisions inside of those fabrication drawings. So I have a choice now. I can force the update. If I have not yet released the fabrication drawings, then I don't really need to show revisions. I'll simply force an update to update the fabrication drawings to, meet the, to match the Revit model. If I've already issued revisions, then I actually need to update the revisions. So I'll update 
the revision, update the drawings, and add a new entry to my revision table. If it's the first revision, then I simply say revise this, and it'll add revision marks. And if I disagree for some reason with the changes that the structural engineer had made, I can delete those changes. I'm typically not going to do that. So we've got the new revisions in here. I'll go into the document manager, and of course, it has flagged these three fabrication drawings that are no longer up to date because they have been revised because of the changes that were made. So again, I can either force the update, update with a revision, just add the revision, or delete the change. In this case, I'm going to update the revision. And I can do this either from the dialog or the right click. This is the first revision, so it's going to be revision A. And I will save the previous version of the fabrication drawings to a backup folder just in case, because I want to keep a history of the changes that were made. So all of my drawings are now up to date. So let's look at the change. Again, I can open this, I can preview it inside the context of the document manager, and I can double click that drawing within the list. And this is the drawing that I modified earlier. I moved the beam down so it didn't conflict with my revision table. So you can see it retained its repositioning within the sheet, but Advanced Steel has now added all of my revision callouts and has labeled them, and added that revision to the revision table. So my fabrication drawings are always up to date. I don't have to make those changes. Advanced Steel is taking care of that for me. Well, now let's look at what was always the bugaboo when I was working as an architect, which was checking those steel fabrication drawings. I would have to sit there with a set of blue lines and go through those fabrication drawings and compare them with the architectural drawings and the structural drawings. Well, with Advanced Steel and Revit, with this interaction, I don't have to do that because from within Advanced Steel, I'm now going to export, or my fabricator would export an up-to-date SMLX file of the current fabrication drawings and send them back to me or the structural engineer. And then there is a synchronization tool that's part of that advanced steel extension. It looks exactly like the, the synchronization tool in advanced steel. And I can use that synchronization tool to see and uh, if there are any changes or it helpful, hopefully verify that the drawings produced by the fabricator match in all ways the drawing that exists inside of Revit. So again, in Advanced Steel, I'm going to export a new SMLX file. This is now version three. And save that little five, six, or seven kilobyte file. And now inside of Revit, I'll go to my add-ins panel. And in the Advanced Steel extension pull down, I'm going to use the synchronization tool. I will load that version three SMLX file. And again, everything's color coded. And I can see there's a lot of things that have been appended. I'm going to clear them all because I'm really only interested in were any beams or columns appended, added, or modified? And there are none. Uh, were there any connections deleted or modified? No. So the only thing that's happened here is the fabricator has created all of these connections which did not exist in the Revit model. So I can now add them to the Revit model by simply applying all actions, which is going to add all of those connections to the Revit model. So the connections that the fabricator added in the advanced steel model are now being transferred into the Revit model. And again, you can see this happening in real time. And when the synchronization dialog box is empty and the model has finished updating, that means that all of the connections have been added to the model in Revit.
So now my Revit model contains all of the connections that were made in advanced steel. Now you're looking at these models in at these connections in the analytical view. In order to make these connections visible inside of Revit, you need to change the visibility because by default, the connections are not initially visible inside of the Revit model. To make them visible, all you need to do is go into the visibility. Well, first of all, I need to go in and let's make this shaded so it's easier to see. And I will go to a fine level of detail. And at the fine level of detail, you can see all of the connection components. Whereas in a medium view, you don't. And in a coarse view, you only see the analytical model. Now, again, in this case, I've already changed my defaults so that all of my connections are visible. But by default, you may find that they're not visible in your model. So you may see the holes and not the connections. So you just need to make sure that you check in the visibility graphic overrides that all of your connections are visible and also switch to a fine level of detail. Now within Revit, and this has been an evolving process. When I started using Advanced Steel, uh, it was around the 2016 or 2017 version. The Advanced Steel connections were not available inside of Revit. You had to actually uh, add another add-on which added the Advanced Steel connections to Revit. Over the last three or four releases, Autodesk has been diligently working to add the several hundred advanced steel connections as standard components inside of Revit. So what you'll find with uh, Revit 2020, almost every single advanced steel connection now exists natively inside of Revit. Those connections ship with the product. You no longer have to add this advanced steel connection add-on as well as the advanced steel add-on. You only need to add the advanced steel add-on. The connections are now available inside of Revit. But like most things in Revit, the connection you want to use may not exist in your Revit, in your RVT file, in your project file, until you add it. So like most other uh, RFA files that you work with in Revit, you will have a, a list of available connections, but the connections are not added to your project until you actually go out and open the structural connection settings dialog and add them to your Revit model. So again, I'm gonna just change the way my model is being displayed. We'll go to a fine level of detail. And now I'm gonna to switch to the structural panel and in the connections panel, I'm gonna click the dialog box launcher to open my structural connection settings dialog. And these are categorized exactly the way they are in advanced steel. The connection group is that listing down the left, the available connections is that middle one. And I can simply add those connections like I would add any component to my Revit model. So those three types of connections are now available within my RVT file. And now when I select the connection, in addition to the generic connection, I have my base plate, my clip angle, and my skewed clip angle. And I can add these to my Revit model almost the same way as I added them when I was working in Advanced Steel. So simply select the connection I want to use. Always look at the prompts. In this case, I can select the column and the beam, hold down the control key. Instead of selecting it, pressing enter, selecting and pressing enter, I select the two components and then press enter. So again, press enter again to redo this, hold down the control key, hold down the control key to select the two beams, press enter. And so that quickly I've added the connections between the beams and the column, the connections between the beam and the girder. And you can see as I orbit around that it's added all of the clips, all of the bolts and nuts. It's automatically created the cutbacks and the copings on the beam. 
And to get into that dialogue, it's essentially editing the type. So it's a standard edit type. But you'll notice that the dialogue looks very similar in Revit to the dialogue that we were working with for that same connection inside Advanced Steel. So the cool thing now is I can actually create LOD 400 drawings or an LOD 400, Level of Detail 400 model inside of Revit and then export the entire model to Advanced Steel. Well, one way of doing this would be for the structural engineer, rather than having the engineer go through and laboriously add every single connection, the, advanced, the structural engineer could create one typical example of each type of connection and then rely on the fabricator to create the copies. And the fabricator could then use the tools inside of Advanced Steel to create a joint group and simply copy the structural engineer's one instance to every similar connection inside of Advanced Steel. So the way that we would do this is to export the model that now contains the prototypical connection. Again, export it as an SMLX file. So we'll call this one two with connections. Save that SMLX file. And then inside of Advanced Steel, If I haven't imported the model yet, then I import the entire model with those connections. So we'll select version two with connections. And now when I look at the advanced steel model, you can see, yes, the connections came in. Now I can I can use the tools in advanced steel to copy these connections. So since we've got those connections, I'll go back to the home ribbon, I'll open up the advanced steel tool palette, and I will use my joint group tool to copy multiple connections, or copy that one connection rather, and now I'll select the objects. So I select the girder, select the beam, and now I can modify that joint group if necessary. And I can use that now that I've got a scope box around it, I can select that connection and I can copy it to that beam and girder combination or any other. Let's copy it again to join those two beams. But with the 2020 release of Revit, Autodesk has taken this even a step further. You now have the ability inside of Revit the structural engineer doesn't have to go through and manually duplicate all those connections. Inside of Revit, it, you can use the propagate connection tool, and Revit will automatically locate every identical connection and copy or propagate connections everywhere in the Revit model where the exact same context is found. So, for example, if I select this connection, which is a beam column connection, and say propagate connection, Revit will now automatically find every single condition. And I'll do the same thing for the beam that comes into the side of the column. And I'll do the same thing for this girder beam connection. And then down here on the second floor, because the second floor connection is different then the top floor, all I do is select the connection and say propagate connection. And now, as I navigate around through the Revit model, let's do it one more time for the base plate, propagate that connection. And now inside of my Revit model, that quickly I have just added every single connection 
all the base plates, all of the beam column connections on the top floor, all of the beam girder connections on the top floor, all of the beam column connections on the second floor were all added to the model with just a series of steps. So I think you can see that the ability to exchange data between Revit and Advanced Steel truly does end that disconnect between the building information model and the steel fabrication drawings. And the tools just get better and better now with each successive release of Advanced Steel and Revit.